Hi there, I'm Heidi Nord with The Brilliant Dyslexic, and I have been a practitioner for dyslexic students for about 15 years now. I started my career as a teacher, and I was very curious early on about why some kids took to reading so naturally and other kids really struggled with it. Because to me, I didn't notice a difference in their IQ level. I wasn't looking at that. I was looking at what was specifically happening with reading. And I think that um, some teachers don't really ask those questions is what I have noticed over the years, having taught in several different schools and having been in private practice. So we're going to talk a little bit about today about how um, sometimes when a teacher doesn't understand dyslexia or learning challenges, it can lead to blaming the student for their learning challenge. And also it can lead, lead to um, shame in the classroom, um, embarrassment for the student, and um, sometimes, you know, harshness from the teacher. And what winds up happening is emotional um, and psychological damage, quite honestly. Dyslexic students are actually some of the brightest students in the classroom. But what happens is when they're not learning how to read and write easily, like most teachers did, teachers sometimes don't understand um, why students aren't learning easily. And so this attitude of, well, maybe the student is lazy, or maybe they're not trying hard enough, or maybe, you know, whatever the teacher is thinking, maybe the teacher thinks that the student has, hasn't been read to enough at home. All of these things create a negative image um, for the child when really their learning issues are not the child's fault. And in fact, um, we know so much more about reading instruction now and we know that it can be taught very, very differently. And all of the emotional and psychological damage that happens to dyslexic students doesn't actually need to happen. So that's the highest ideal, I think, for me and for a lot of people working with dyslexia, dyslexia legislation, um, attorneys who are working with dyslexic students, you know, we want to see people who are positive, proactive, motivational, and inspirational for dyslexic students. Because otherwise, um, the feeling of shame that dyslexic students receive is unreal. Um, I have seen some situations that are not healthy at all. And most of that unhealth comes from denial of people in school positions, like school psychologists, um, speech therapists, um, reading teachers, special education teachers, um, who don't believe in dyslexia. Dyslexia has been very well researched. We know so much about it. And for people to perpetuate an idea that um, dyslexic students aren't smart enough or aren't able to read is really dropping the ball at this point in time and creating far too much damage. So I think a lot about um, equity and how we, we can create more equity. And I really feel that equity in the classroom needs to happen if, if and when, when we screen all of our students for dyslexia. Because, so let's take a student who gets screened for dyslexia in kindergarten. They get the correct tools, the correct instruction, and they're able to run out of the gate fine with their learning. And I've had students like this. They come to me at five years old. The family knows that there's probably an issue here and the problem gets worked through really quickly. Um, so let's take another student um, maybe who um, 
you know, is in 11th grade and they haven't had anybody really find out what's happening with them learning wise. This child could even have an IEP and have had an IEP for a very long time. However, if the people who have written the IEP um, haven't learned the specific issue that's going on with the student, there might not be significant educational changes. And, um, you know, this can lead to great shame for students because um, they keep feeling unsuccessful. And that's not what we want for any student, is it? We don't want anybody to feel unsuccessful because it sets you up so much for life, all of the feeling states that you have. So the more teachers, administrators, psychologists, speech therapists learn about dyslexia, the better off we will be completely as a society. So, um, you know, sometimes when students are shamed in classrooms, um, it leads to a lot of fear, stress, and anxiety. And all of those mechanisms, um, you know, what happens when you're learning and you're feeling those things is your brain actually starts to shut down. Because when we don't feel um, accomplished or happy when we're learning, we're just, our brain is just going to shut down. And there's been many studies that have um, proven this. So students need to feel safe and secure when they're learning. So a couple of things need to happen um, for students to feel that way. And one thing is that teachers could really start to monitor the way they approach and talk to a student. So um, I've taken a lot of time in my life to figure out how to be positive, happy, and inspirational with students. And it is huge. The impact that makes is huge. Um, they say that for every um, one negative thing somebody hears, they need to hear at least five positive things to counteract that one negative. And what happens is to the students who are having issues with reading is sometimes they'll get um, benched for not completing their work on time. Um, sometimes they will get detention um, because maybe they've acted out. Instead of doing their classwork, it becomes like a a mechanism that it's easier. They would rather act out than you know, show what's happening with their learning. So as educators, we need to really get down to the basic level of trust um, and trust our students and never ever talk down to any of them because it's not how people learn. People learn through positive encouragement and motivation. And that's what we need to do. Um, you know, in order to have every child succeed. That and of course, learning the correct instructional strategies. And I can't emphasize that one more either. You know, we have programs, many of them. Um, they're called Orton Gillingham programs and um, they teach reading and writing sequentially, you know, in order. Um, it's a very systematic and that's what we need to do um, for these students is to learn how to teach better and learn how to monitor our own self-talk. Um, I had a friend in high school um, who, when she went to her counselor, the counselor told her, you'll never succeed at anything. You know, and we think about these things sometimes that come out of teachers' mouths, out of counselors' mouths, and we wonder, you know, why we're in the state of education that we're in. Those kinds of things really should never be said. Um, and 
we need to be so much more positive and proactive with students because when students feel good about themselves and good about their learning, they're going to go out into society and be um, productive, happy, and great workers is the bottom line. Um, so anyway, um, you know, when teachers blame students for their learning challenges, it's a big problem. And it leads to something I call shame storms, um, which I'll talk about in another video. Anyway, thank you so much.